What's up guys? Um, today I'm going to be doing a comparison between two very popular, well one more popular than the other, but two um, pretty common fixed blades um, you'll see out on the market today. Um, it'll be between the slightly lesser known Bark River Bravo Necker and the um, Essie Rat Azula. These both are great fixed blades and before the video starts I just want to tell you guys they're both worth the money. Um, just going with that, let's talk about price first, so we know how to, you know, uh, you know how to think about everything. Um, the Azula comes in at about fifty-five dollars, fifty dollars without the scales, and another fifteen dollars for the scales. Um, the Bark River Bravo Necker comes in basic at, um, I believe, sixty-five about, um, and it doesn't come with the scales. You can order custom scales; they're like seventy dollars, though they're very expensive. Um, so. If, first of all, you're looking for a knife with a real handle, um, go with Izula. That's all I can say because this one will cost you about twice as much. Specifications are about the same. They're both in the same class. You can both use them kind of like neck knives. This one, I'd say less than this one. Um, but overall length is the exact same on both um, by, by manufacturer specs. Um, 6.25 inches total. Um, blade length is 2.5 on the um, Bark River and 2.88 on the Azula. The blade thickness is 0.156. It's a little bit thicker than on the Bravo Necker, which is 0.130. Um, the weight is 2 ounces only for the, uh, without the scales for the Azula, and it's 1.4 ounces for the Bravo Necker. So they're both very, very light, very easy to carry. Um, I just, they're, they're not really that different. Um, let's start off with the blade. Um, you can see they both do have pretty short blades. This one's 2.5 inches, uh, this one's 2.88 inches, so both sub 3 inch blades. Um, but they both cut very, very well. Um, this one has a flat grind, this one has a, a convex grind. And, um, obviously full flat grind, um, it's a favorite of many in the knife community, and I understand that because it just cuts great. But the Bark River, um, has a convex grind, which is... Not really too often seen on production knives, but a lot of people just absolutely rave about this grind. And um, I've, re I've really been liking it so far. I, I haven't had to do any work on it. I've cut a lot of, just split a lot of branches and stuff, uh, just for fun, because I was bored. Um, but just with this knife here, and it, it's still razor, razor sharp. Um, just easily cuts paper. So the grinds are, you know, largely okay. This one, Zula came razor sharp from the factory. This one came razor sharp. I think this one would stay sharper longer, but I'm not sure. This one's a 12C27, a Sandvik stainless steel, while this one is 1095 high carbon. Um, as for which steel I think is better, I have no idea. But this 12C27 has been performing for me. And I have really haven't had too many experience with the uh, 1095 because I've, I've rarely used... Um, 1095 blades in comparison to my stainless ones, so I have a much better feel for how stainless blades um, hold up. The coating on on the uh, Azula is you can see it's on the blade here, but there's none on the Bark River, which I think is um pretty interesting. Uh, for Bark River, what I think they did is they first coated the blank. Um, basically without even the grinds, and they, they just grind it off the coating. Um, the coat on the Azula is, I think, probably a little better with wear. It's a crinkle coat, and it's much coarser. Um, this is a much smoother. It's also a crinkle coat, but um, you can see here a little bit's been coming off on the top. Um, you, you can tell they kind of grinded off the coating because on the top here, there's there's still the coating, which is good. They covered as much as they could, but I prefer the cutting edge, um, the whole blade, uh, un uncoated because um, the only really important thing about the blade is the edge. Um, I mean, the rest of the blade is really not that important except when you're going through something thick and then you want to reduce friction. And I feel like friction is much better. I mean, this is very, very smooth when I when I feel the stainless uncoated blade here, but when I feel the Azula, it's just much rougher. So I, I do think this one's a better cutter. Um, the slightly thinner profile, the convex grind comes to a very nice edge. And also the uncoated blade reduces friction when you're cutting. Um, not to say that Azula's bad. It's, it's very good. Let's go on to the handles. Um, the handle is a little bit better on the Bark River, in my opinion, as well. I think the Azula handle is a little bit too small. I think they took away a little bit too much um, with the thick um, 
a Ricasso type deal here along with a strange handle shape. What happens is I feel like when you're holding the knife, uh, your, your pinky tends to, tends to slip off. Uh, you can see here, it's very easy for the pinky to slip off. You know, see what I'm doing here? Um, with the Barker River Bravo Necker, um, there's a, actually a, um, uh, the, the metal comes up like that, and it helps hold your hand more easily and, and more efficiently. Um, so I do feel like that's it's, it's a much better uh, knife to hold. In addition, if you see the scales, they're full length of the handle, and they're contoured very nicely. So I think the handles would be much better on the Bark River 2. Um, the Azula handles are good. They do make it feel like a lot nicer. But the problem is I think that they are a little too fat, okay? And they're not big enough. I, I prefer, like, on the Azula 2, what they did is they put full micarta scales around the ring, and I think that would make it much, much more comfortable. So in terms of a uh, cutting performance and handle length, the, bar, uh, the Bravo Necker I think is personally better. Um, that's why I'm disappointed that this one hasn't got too much press. Um, but though I've said that the Bark River is better than the Azula so far, um, let's go to the sheath. Um, I do prefer Kydex to this plastic stuff that it has on the Azula sheath. But in terms of this specific example, I do prefer the Azula sheath over this specific sheath. Um, let's see the Azula sheath let's put it in there okay and if you wiggle around you can see there's basically no play uh, i can't make it rattle maybe a little bit do with that um but with the kydex sheath over here with the um bark river you can see it's much much looser do you hear that You can see it's wiggling around on the sheath. In addition, the retention is pretty weak um, compared to the Zula, where, which has a really nice um, draw option. So I do think this is a better sheath, um, the Zula sheath, and that's one redeeming factor for the Zula. They both have drainage holes. Um, uh, you can't really easily see the one on the Azula, but it's actually in this lanyard hole up here at the top. The Kydex is not completely smushed together. Um, you can see a little bit of light if you look down. Um, I can see it in real life, but I don't. I don't know if the camera can see it. Um, no, you can't. But there is a little bit. You can see through the end of the sheath. Um, with, the, with this one, is obvious. You know, there's a big hole. Um, I wish they made the Azula sheath in Kydex, but this one is better than the Bark River one. This, this one is just kind of a bad sheath in general. Um, that's why I wouldn't really w wear this as a neck knife, because I'd worry about it uh, slipping out. Um, and you, you could really hurt yourself that way. Um, there's sort of a ridge on top here. Um, I don't know if you can see. It's not existent on the back side, but there's a ridge here. And apparently that's supposed to be for a... Um, fire steel. Um, you're supposed to stick a fire steel in here, but I'm not sure how you do that. Um, I don't really know how that works, but uh, I guess it's okay. <laughs> Nothing to complain about. Overall, I would say try out the Bravo Necker. Um, not a lot of people know about it, but I think it's a really great blade at a really great price. And I feel like for the five ten dollars you'll spend over the Zula, this is a significantly better cutter and better has better ergonomics. Um, in addition, if you're looking for just if you're looking to get the handle scales, um, then I guess you'd go for the Zula because you'll be spending over one hundred twenty, hundred thirty dollars going with the Bravo Necker. Um, if you want to carry as a neck knife, I'd also say go with the Azula because of the better sheath, the much better retention in the sheath. Um, the Bark River is a slightly um, worse at that. Um, overall though, I'd really, really say that you can't go wrong with either one of these knives. These are both great values from great companies. They both have excellent fit and finish. Maybe the sheath is the only thing that's lacking out of um, all of this. But they both have very good fit and finish. And um, I think that they're just, you know, both of them, I wouldn't be sad if I had one over the other. Um, the differences between them are slight. I mean, the handle length, um, the cutting performance, those aren't major things. And um, I don't really have too much to complain about. Um, so they're both great knives, but, you know, maybe you've gained a little bit from this video. I hope you can make a better decision. Um, and uh, good luck on your future purchases. Um, these would both make great additions to any collection. Uh, got more videos coming soon, guys. Uh, see you all later. Peace.